I am currently shooting on my Google Pixel 8 phone with the Ocelon Smart X Pro. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt and this is Dwyer Creative. Today, I wanna to go over this gimbal right here. Now this is the Ashwan, sorry if I say that wrong, Smart X Pro. And it was sent out to me by the company for a review, but this is my channel and I always try to give my honest opinion. So I will be very honest about this and they are not sponsoring this. Now saying that I do use gimbals, uh, the Osmos Pocket 3, which I'm currently filming on for my mirrorless camera, I have a DJI RSC2. I have used the DJI Osmos mobile system, which I didn't really like. Quick unboxing, which we'll cut to here. This is what it was inside the box. You have a little remote, some controls there. Just go ahead and open this. On this little remote, you have their company name, a little button that has a camera on it, a button in the middle that says M, and then up, down, left, and right. On the left, you have a USB port, to charge it and on the right you have an on and off switch and all the instructions and everything is not in English so I'm gonna have to translate this later. This is the gimbal that they sent out. Pretty simple packaging. This is the Smart X Pro. It says face tracking, hold with a magnet, three axis smartphone stabilizer, USB type C tripod, all right, so let's just go ahead and open this right along the top here. That was a little bit too sharp. I believe this should slide right out. Here we go. It's going to pop open. So 6424. It's a date right there. It just has a little foam cover. Now inside the box, we have their little tripod, and of course you have the gimbal. So, little tripod, pretty standard. Next is a USB charging cable. So you have a USB-A with USB-C. Wouldn't really prefer to have a USB-C the USB-C, but plenty of those around. Now here, we have the little LED light, I think. All right, so here we have this. I had thought it was an LED light, but now I'm not sure. You have a USB port there, a magnet here, and controls on top, power, and then it says M. I guess I probably have to connect this. Maybe this is the AI tracking, not really sure. So now for the gimbal. You have a dial here on the right. You have a switch here that says T and W, a USB-C right here, plastic. Always nice to pull that off. And on here you have a little joystick. A tiny little LCD screen, I'm assuming, a power button and a record button. As I said, with the unboxing, you have the tripod, the gimbal, and then this up here, which is their little AI. They did send out a little remote. So if you go left, right, and you can change the modes and then also take a picture or start the video with it. Now for this, my biggest complaint with this is their tilting going from up and down. So there is a very limited range for that. Now, if you're panning left or right, it works really well. The other thing that I've noticed with this gimbal is if you have a larger phone like I do, so this is the iPhone 12 Max Pro. And as I said in the beginning, I had my Google Pixel 8 on here. So let me just go ahead and swap these out real quick. I'm gonna take that little AI off. Now, like my issue with the DJI version is that for these larger phones, it does not really support it well. So there it's, it's on and it's obviously not holding it well. One of the big things is with the case, it doesn't really clamp onto it well. If you use it just the phone, it does a little bit better. But if you're using any lenses where the attachment needs the case, it's not really gonna fit these type of gimbals well. If you are gonna use a regular size phone like my Google Pixel 8, it will fit in there pretty nicely and it is balanced. But then again, my issue comes here with my volume buttons. If I keep the phone centered, it goes right over the volume buttons. A few little features with this. You have the ring light on the back, and obviously you can kind of balance it a little bit going up and down. The other feature it has is this little knob here, which does a manual focus, but for me, without having focus peaking, I can't really tell where that focus is unless you're really close to the screen. On the side here, it does offer a zoom to go in and out. 
and it's there. To turn it on, you just hit the power button. Reset your framing, you just double click the joystick. To go through the different modes, you just click on the joystick once, so lock, POV, pan focus, follow, and lock again. The record button is here, but if you double click it, it'll switch from horizontal to vertical, and you can go back. For the fill light, it's going to be single click on the power button at three levels. You have one, two, and three. I'm going to turn that off. This is also supposed to offer a wireless charging, which I have got it to work, but right now it says if you long press on the record button, there you go. So it does act as a wireless charger. Let's turn that off. <laughs> this does have a replaceable battery, and this is a 3200 milliamp battery. So it's supposed to have AI, AI off. The green light to blue, and now blue to green to turn AI on. And it does kind of track you, but it's a little slow. When you open up the app, you're going to come to this main screen here. You're going to see the other gimbals that they advertise for, and also basic tutorials. Nothing too in depth, but they all do offer some of that. At the bottom, you have a home button, an album button, the camera button, a sport, and then just your profile. So let's go straight into the camera. It's not connecting. What do you know? So in the bottom left, you're gonna have your album and the bottom right, you're gonna be able to switch from the front to the rear camera. You also have this little face here. That's gonna be your object tracking or which tracking mode you want, face, body, object, or other. Above your record button, you have trajectory delay, time-lapse of video, photo, panorama, Hitchcock, Inception, or Moves. Now, if we go into the moves, this just shows you how to do basic gimbal moves and some things that you may want to try. Now, you can see just slightly above that, it's going to give you your current settings, your frame rate, ISO, EV level, and then your focus. So, if you can see on that right side with the MF, the manual focus, it's at 7. Here's where that focus puller on the left and right will come into play. Now, personally, as I mentioned earlier, I don't find this useful because you don't have like the focus peaking where you can tell exactly where you're looking at. And just to reset this, you're just gonna click on your screen and it'll go ahead and autofocus that area. Now on that left side where that little hand is, it is turned on, but let me turn that off and turn it back on. Here's where you're gonna find your gestures. So you're going to have a few more than with the AI tracking. You have a fist for the switch from video to photo mode, an open hand gesture to start and stop the video recording, the OK gestures to turn on and off the facial tracking, hands flat with the thumbs up is supposed to toggle the horizontal and vertical screens. For me, I haven't really been able to get that done with the accurate rate. And the last one is going to be L-shaped gesture of both hands will pause to turn on the gesture recognition. Now on the top right, that little home button will take you back home. That little magic wand there is going to be your filter. Now here you're, you're going to be able to say smooth out some lines and other minor adjustments. Now in this PX right to the left of that is where you're going to choose your video resolution. Note if you go to 4K, which is what I like to shoot at and at 24, if you go back to that filter, it will not work with that. It will not work with 4K. Let's go over to these four buttons on the top left. Here you're going to get a few more options. I like to leave the grid on and anti-shake. Those ones I would leave on for this. And here you have also a delay timer. Here you're going to be able to control that fill light behind it too. And then you have the camera settings. Selfie mirror, Bluetooth microphone, camera sound, or lock facial tracking. Then also you'll have access to the gimbal settings, which I am having trouble connecting my phone to it right now. So I can't get into that and then you're going to have this pro mode. Now in this pro mode, you're going to be able to control your phone as a camera to more exactly what you want. Like I said, for myself, I like to shoot at 24. ISO is going to depend on the scene. Then you can also pick your white balance and then where your focus point is going to be. My thoughts on this gimbal. Now, I have been using it for a past week or so, or since I've gotten it, I have run into a few little things. I think overall it is a decent gimbal if you're just getting into things and you want to learn how to use a gimbal, especially if you can catch them on a sale, do offer a little control in their application, which 
They do offer some more advanced controls using their application, and then it does do some special effects like the Inception mode. Now, in terms of limited ability, as I mentioned earlier, on the access where you're looking up and down it does have a very limited access for that some of its main competitors one of their main competitors actually recently fixed that problem where you have a much wider view of range going up and down with that my other main issue was using a larger phone with a case i ran into this problem too with the dji version that with larger phones with a case on it kind of doesn't want to hold on to it you can make it work but i don't have confidence in that so smaller phones like the Pixel 8 would definitely fit it better. Now the other major thing is going to be in terms of this little device here. Now, I believe this is a third generation of this. And I say that just because of the little research I did before this. I see all, most of the first reviews coming about two years ago. And it was just the gimbal. Then later on there's a few other reviews that come with. It comes with something like this but it is a RGB light. And now it's coming with an AI tracker in the same sort of form. So that's why I say I think this is the third generation of it. Now with this AI tracker as I mentioned before it has three general gestures. You have this to turn the AI on and off. You have this to turn the recording on and off. And then you're supposed to have this to be able to go from landscape to portrait and vice versa. As for the AI on and off, it's worked. I haven't had any issues with it. For the recording, it just does a blinking of the white light. Now this is where I would like to see something where it does a different sequence for that blinking of the white light. So say if you starting recording, you do three long white blinks. That would be opposed to say when it would stop, the white light would blink three times but have it be a short one. That would differentiate when you start and stop. But as of right now, you can't tell that. And if you do a few different recordings, you might forget. It's easily done. I've done that where I'm not sure if I'm recording. And the only thing that tells me that is usually a little indicator on my camera. For this, you don't have that in their indicator, so you're gonna have to go all the way up to your phone to figure that out. Now, the last thing is gonna be that switching from portrait to landscape. Personally, I wouldn't really use this feature. My actual use with it it only did it a few times, so I've used this feature, let's say, a dozen times, and it would only work maybe three or four times. Now, to kind of wrap this up, overall, would this be something that I personally pick up? No. As of right now, this isn't something that I would particularly use. I don't film a whole lot on my phone for that sort of content. Right now, I've been using my DJI Osmos Pocket 3 for a lot of my content and it has a gimbal built into it and it works really well. If I'm going for the bigger projects, I'm going to my DJI one, which will hold a full frame camera. Now, in terms of their competitors, DJI and Zion are gonna be the two major competitors that I see for this one specifically, especially in that price range, depending on sales or promotions, all three of these companies, you can find them at really good deals or at their normal pricing. If you can find this at a really good deal and you're really just looking for something to get started, I think that this would be a good option, but just remember there are limitations. So there you go. That's my first impression and a quick review on the SmartX Pro. If you have any questions or comments about this gimbal, let me know below. And as always, thanks for watching.